Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1 6 scale figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at the Mars Toys Old Housekeeper aka Michael Goff's Alfred Pennyworth from Batman 89, Batman Returns, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Now I got mine as a review sample from Mars Toys organised by 1 6 kit. I have popped the link to Kit's site in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review. All opinions, as always, are 100% my own. I have not been asked to only say good things. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new 1 6 scale figure review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, it is simple. But I love it. It's of course a scene from Batman 1989, the Batwing flying up in front of the moon, making it look like the Bat symbol. And seeing as though 89 was the first time we saw Michael Goff as Alfred, this just works for me. We have Mars toys up in the top left hand corner, and down below, Old Housekeeper. On the side of the box we have the clouds just spilling over the edge from the front cover, as well as one six scale collectible figure. Around the back, the image from the front cover, except the Bat logo moon thing is blurred, the clouds down below, warnings and legal information, as well as two product shots of the actual figure himself. I like the idea of this image on the slip cover because it showcases various different eras of Batman. Seeing as though Michael Goff was Alfred for Keaton, Kilmer and Clooney, this does make sense until we get to like the Bale Bat symbol and the Batman Beyond symbol. They're both in here as well. So... Yes, in theory it works, in practice it's not super accurate. Which is fine for the slipcover because it's just on the packaging, who cares, right? But it's also on something inside the box that I do care about and we'll discuss in just a second. We do get an instruction sheet that lets us know we can attach the various bits and pieces onto the serving tray with double-sided tape that is included. And then Alfred himself. First in-hand impressions for Alfred. So far so good, it seems that once again Mars toys have not missed. What we are going to do now though is get all of Alfred's accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first. So this is what I meant earlier about the logo being more prominent on something that is important to the figure. It's the display base and having the Bale symbol be just right on top jumping out at me it doesn't work for me, I would have preferred just an 89 Batman symbol. It's still a cool effect, just not my vibe. Around the front, Alfred on an etched metal nameplate, whereas up top, an adjustable crotch grabber. Next up, just off camera here we have a bunch of different interchangeable outfit options. We get these shirt sleeve protectors, a bow tie that actually has a real metal buckle around the back to tighten it up, a green apron, a different suit jacket, and also another pair of pants. We will try this stuff out on him a little bit later. Same thing with the hat and the glasses. This time with the glasses, instead of going with a metal frame because he does have this very distinctive brown turtle shell effect to them, there are some real lenses inside the glasses. I am curious to see what that looks like if they'll distort his eyes underneath it all. Knowing Mars toys, I highly doubt that that's going to be the case. I reckon they're going to look awesome on the sculpt. Now we do get some little accessories for his dinner tray. We get salt and pepper shakers done in this nice shiny, almost chrome silver. A vase with this faux flower up on top. And also a set of dinner bells. They're not actual functional bells and that's okay because they're really small. We may as well move on to the dinner tray. The handles do feel quite thin and it's made of this solid plastic so there's no give to it. When you're wedging his hands over the top, just be careful. You wouldn't want to snap the handles off the tray. There are these ridges up on top that I think are meant to store like the salt and pepper shakers and the dinner bell perhaps. They have included that 3M double sided tape to stick everything down but the matte textured silver finish that's still quite shiny should, fingers crossed, help keep everything planted. Like the dinner plate, we will be building ourselves a 1-6 scale meal it seems. This is just done in more of a satin off-white colour. Then we get a glass of milk, there's some ornate detailing on the glass itself, and they've poured this 
semi-translucent white plastic inside the clear glass. So there's this little translucent layer up top that makes it look like real milk is inside this thing. We get a bed of lettuce with some airbrush shading in the middle and some washers in the crevices. I don't think I've ever quite described lettuce that way before. Three sets of three onion rings, so nine in total. They've got some texture to them. And there's also airbrush shading on these little guys. And the same thing can be said for the hunks of uh, fried chicken, perhaps. I think that's what they're supposed to be. There's a lot of texture here and shading, plus a little spot where it looks like the chicken might be a touch undercooked. And lastly, the best accessory here. It's a classic double patty cheeseburger. We've got the cheese spilling out over the edges. You can also make out some tomato sauce, maybe some mayonnaise, which isn't my vibe for a burger and some green stuff, which is either pickles, lettuce, or some pico de gallo, perhaps. There's shading on the bun, and a whole bunch of texture on the underside. I've said texture way too much. So when everything's assembled, we have an extremely unhealthy meal. At least there's a bed of lettuce down below to try and bring some brightness back into it, I suppose. And then lastly, just so many hands. We get some gloved ones, these are open palm hands, you can even make out some skin tone on the inside where this flap would be buttoned over the top of the underside of the glove. There are the lines on the back, and there's a little bit of shading in the crevices. Same thing for the gripping hands, these wrinkles over the top, yes they're well sculpted, but they're not doing all of the heavy lifting, it's the shading that's bringing out that sculpt work. The same thing can be said for the ungloved hands. Yes, there's wrinkling and there's just general age lines here and there, plus the fingers do look a little bit gaunt, but it's that rosier shading over the top of the insanely detailed skin tone that just sells it to me. We also get some ungloved gripping hands with the same level of detail as those ones we just looked at, some closed fists, although something tells me that Alfred isn't much of a brawler, at least he wasn't in those films. So. I won't be displaying my Alfred with closed fists. But the open palm hands already installed on him out of the box are potentially something I would go with. What we are going to do now though is get Alfred himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. The recipe for a perfect Michael Goff Alfred figure is actually quite straightforward. If you nail all of these things, then you've done it essentially. Number one, proportions. He needs to be slightly tall and lanky, but have this narrow, almost frail frame because Michael Goff was quite old when he played Alfred. Number two, the tailoring needs to be impeccable, of course. Number three, come with a decent array of accessories. And number four, arguably the most important point, nail the head sculpt. It needs to be a banging sculpt with a really strong likeness. I'm pleased to report that Mars toys were firing on all cylinders with this one because they have done it. This, to me at least, is a perfect Michael Goff Alfred in 1-6 scale. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Alfred's head sculpt. This is a bloody good sculpt, but it might not be perfect until we put the glasses on. Right now, the likeness is good, but I think it will be stronger with them on. We'll see in just a second. Technically speaking, there's a lot of skin texture, both sculpted and painted, he's even got that mole off to one side. And because Michael Goff was older when he played Alfred, there is a ton of surface detail. We've got the wrinkles, we've got the crow's feet, and we've got the exaggerated frown lines because of course he's raising his signature big bushy eyebrows which have a lot of volume to them, and there are multiple layers of paint. You've got the white, the grey, and some black shading in there as well. And then we get to the hairline. He actually looks like he's thinning. It's not super voluminous, and you can even make out some skin tone poking through the individual strands of hair. Now it is a single piece head sculpt, meaning the neck goes all the way down into the body and there's no cut under the chin. That, for me, for a suited character, is the best way to do it, because it looks as realistic as possible. See what I mean? With those turtle shell penny round glasses on, the likeness is even better now. But there is one thing that I do want to adjust, because out of the box, when you just pop the glasses on, they do look a tad goofy. The arms, they stick out over the tops of the ears. Not the end of the world, though, it is quite easily fixable. 
way better. All you have to do for this is just literally boil some water, pop the arms of the glasses in said boiling water, then turn the ends of them in a little so that when you pop them on the head sculpt, they sit a lot closer to the sides of his head versus sticking out the way they were doing before. Now he does come with a hat, but I don't think I'm going to have my Alfred wearing it. When you wedge it onto the sculpt, just be careful because it's made of plastic, the head sculpt is fully painted, so there is an element of friction there. If you do push it down too far, you will maybe do some damage to the paint apps. So like I said, exercise some caution. Although with the hat on, he does look pretty darn good. Alfred does have multiple different outfit options. We are going to get to them, but we'll start off with the default appearance first, because this is how he comes right out of the box. The tailoring is very sharp. The stitching is nice and clean. The shoulder pads are well defined. The lapels sit quite flat on the body, nothing is sticking out and looking ugly. And the shirt cuffs even poke out from underneath the sleeves of the suit jacket. The shirt itself does have this textured weave to it, and the collar is well structured, meaning it's pretty stiff. It's not going to sag down and look all kinds of ugly and untidy poking out from over the top of the tie. Now, I reckon the dress shirt is more so meant to be paired with the bow tie rather than the standard black tie, but if you prefer this look, totally up to you. The tie itself does have a real knot up the top, so you can adjust it up and down if you so choose. The buttons, they're done in this gold finish. They're just for show. The shirt is held together with Velcro. The waistcoat is held together with press studs, and they are tucked right underneath this top flap with the faux buttons over the top, meaning the press studs don't stick out around the front, which is absolutely a good thing. The suit jacket is slightly darker compared to the waistcoat, and then the tie is darker like the jacket, so there is a little bit of contrast going on. And then around the back for the coattails, they aren't wired, I don't think they need to be, because even out of the box, they sit pretty flat, honestly. Coming down to his pants, they are done in this two-tone effect with the grey stripes over the top of the slightly shinier black material. And there's this herringbone weave to them. Having them be slightly different in finish compared to all the other bits and pieces on his outfit, once again introduces some visual interest and some contrast. He does have some real working pockets on the trousers, and they are slightly bigger and baggier, especially where they break on top of his shoes, as compared to, say, Bruce Wayne's suit, for example. And I'm okay with that. I don't think Alfred's suits would be as nicely tailored as Bruce's. He has some real socks underneath his trousers, and the shoes do have some wrinkling sculpted in, and some stitching plus some bar laces. They're just done in unpainted black plastic. There isn't any tread sculpted in underneath either. If you are wondering what Alfred looks like in one of his alternative looks, well, so am I. Okay, it's been decided. This is how I'm going to display my Alfred. Even though I do still quite like the way he looks out of the box as well. Now that we've replaced the tie with the bow tie, it just works with this outfit. You can see way more of that textured panel on the shirt and those gold buttons. Plus, the collar just makes sense with the bow tie, as we've already discussed. The suit jacket still has the defined shoulder pads, and the shirt cuffs do poke out from underneath the sleeves. Although this one has receded up a little. You can adjust it. If you just grab the shirt cuffs, you can pull them down. I've also popped on his white gloves, which I think just makes this outfit. The lapels have been switched out for these much longer pointier ones on this suit jacket, but it still retains the longer coattails, and they've added these buttons on the front. The pants I've also changed out for the slightly more form-fitting ones. They do have these creases down the front, still the working pockets, but now they're not textured and they're not contrasting. They match, the material is the exact same as the material used for the waistcoat. They also break slightly higher on top of the shoes. Now, even though you can mix and match and maybe change out just certain bits and pieces for the outfit, I think, like I said, that this is how I'm going to go in my display. What I was trying to say in a kind of long-winded way is just have fun with it. Mix and match the bits and pieces and find your perfect look for Alfred. For me, it was the one that we just had on him. 
Now that I've switched him back to the regular tie, I've also popped on the green apron, ditched the waistcoat and the suit jacket, but installed the shirt sleeve protectors. He'd wear these if he was cooking a very messy meal, for example, like a spaghetti bolognese. He didn't want to get the sauce on his white shirt, so he'd pop these on. I've stuck with the gloves, but I have switched the pants back to the initial ones, the slightly baggier, but more casual pants. This would work if you did have him more so posed up with Bruce Wayne as though he's serving something on a tray. I don't love this particular look. I'm still happy we have these accessories, but this for me is more so something I'd use if I had a second Alfred. My primary one, he'd be wearing the more formal attire. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, Mars Toys Alfred, and on the right, Mars Toys Mr. W, aka their version of Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne. As you can see, Alfred is ever so slightly taller. In real life, Keaton is 5'9", whereas Michael Goff was 5'11". So, technically Alfred should be even taller than he is if we were going for accurate scaling. I don't really mind all that much, I can suspend disbelief because can you imagine if Alfred was not only taller than Bruce Wayne, but also Batman? I don't think that would work as well as this does. See what I mean? Alfred is taller, but he doesn't tower over the Dark Knight. They split the difference with the height and went for something kind of in the middle that works in terms of accuracy, but also scaling next to Bruce Wayne and Batman. Either Batman, I should say. Here we have the Batman Returns figure by Hot Toys. And the scaling once again works. These two I could absolutely see myself displaying side by side in the collection. Going over Alfred's articulation, starting off with his head sculpt. It is on a fixed neck with a ball joint down the bottom, looking forward and back, swivel, and pivot side to side. Even though he does have multiple layers on, his arms will go up to there, relatively unhindered, forward and back, and there's a butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going way past 90, then for the wrist peg, it's a hinge and swivel. His torso has two separate joints, one at the midsection and one at the waist, crunching forward to there, going back to there, swivel, and pivot side to side. His legs will go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, ratcheted double bend at the knees going past 90, and a double ball peg at the ankles, good for forward and back, swivel, and tons of ankle tilt. Wrapping up on Mars Toys' Alfred Pennyworth, based off his appearance in Batman 1989, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. Michael Goff was Alfred for a really long time, which makes it even more surprising that it took a really long time to get a Michael Goff Alfred in 1-6 scale. I think that Mars Toys are currently one of the only third-party companies that can execute at this level, so I'm glad it was them that decided to make him. He comes with a ton of accessories, the body proportions look accurate to me, he also has multiple interchangeable outfit options, and the tailoring on those outfit options is impeccable. Then we get to the head sculpt, the pièce de résistance for me personally. The likeness is bang on, the skin texture and paint applications and detail, next level. But my favourite part about the sculpt is you can pop the glasses and the hat on and it doesn't look stupid. Sometimes things can look comically large and they can ruin a head sculpt. With this one, the hat and the glasses actually help the sculpt rather than hinder it. So at the end of this, am I happy? I'm over the moon with this Alfred. It's a figure that I've wanted for ages. I've said that multiple times throughout this video. So I want to get this video done and pop him in the 89 Batman display exactly where he should be. Now I got mine as a review sample from Mars Toys organized by 1 6th Kit. I have popped the link to Kit's site in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review. As always, all opinions have been 100% my own. I have not been asked to only say good things. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe, we'll catch you in the next video.